Some brotherly advice. My name is Larry Jones, and I welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As it is a difficult world we live in, so it is a difficult church we live in. By church, I am referring to churchianity in general, of which we are all a part. And as it is a troubled world we live in, so it is a troubled church we live in. The church is troubled. It ain't happy. It is not at peace. And as it is a confused world we live in, so it is a confused church we live in. Confusion is a result of merging scripture with tradition. And as it is a dangerous world we live in, so it is a dangerous church we live in. Like, really? One could define danger as that which puts us, potentially, into spiritual bondage. If it stifles the lordship of the Holy Spirit, it is dangerous. Since I have been around longer than most, not all, but most, and since I have observed more than most, not all, but most, and since I have read more than most, please bear with me as I give some pointers to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, advice that I believe will improve your Christianity and better prepare you for the approaching judgment seat of Christ. Please understand, we are to listen to one another and after giving consideration, make a judgment as to the validity and value of what is said. That's what the Bible says to do. And we do obey the Bible, right? Five suggestions for your consideration. Suggestion number one, make relationship with Jesus Christ a priority. Not relationship with parents or children, as important as that is. Not relationship with Christians. Not relationship with family and friends. But relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Give priority to developing an improved relationship with your creator and God and high priest and intercessor and sin bearer and shepherd and provider and elder brother. Get that right and all the pieces will fit together. Number two, make sure that the Lord is Lord. Someone sits on the throne of your life, ruling and reigning over you. Christians assume that that someone is Jesus, but in most cases it is not. It just isn't. We can obey other words, other non-biblical traditions, other people, and still assume wrongly that Christ is Lord. That someone sitting on the throne of your life could be you. In other words, you are your own decision maker. You, not the Holy Spirit, who Christ has sent to you, call the shots. Or that someone could be pastor whoever. That someone could be the Christians you hang with. Or it may not be a someone, but a something. It could be love of things, a religious ambition, a strong desire to be influential and respected. It could be an addiction. It could be self-indulgence. It could be many things. If something or someone has replaced the Lordship of Christ, repentance is needful. Lord Jesus, I am guilty of idolatry. I have replaced you with an inferior God. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. And then, in your imagination, place the Lord Jesus Christ back into the seat of sovereign ruler, the place as king he once occupied when first born again of the Holy Spirit. Again, place the Lord Jesus on the throne of your Christianity. In your imagination, take Jesus by the hand and solemnly lead him to that high place of authority. Humbly invite him to be seated. Assure him, from this time onward, you will acknowledge him as the Lord of your life, your decision maker, your commander in chief. Suggestion number three, don't compromise. Compromise takes strength out of your life. You will be weakened to the degree that you compromise. Drinking from the cup of compromise is like drinking salted water. It only makes us thirstier for more. The more we drink, the more we drink. Brothers and sisters, 
pressure to compromise is unrelenting. You will learn that compromisers will only fellowship with compromisers. Compromisers have lots of friends. Non-compromisers can get lonely. Compromisers will feel awkward and convicted by those who refuse to walk their shallow walk and talk their shallow talk. They will exclude you unless you compromise your high place in Christ. Because of a need to be accepted, who likes rejection? The pull to compromise is unrelenting. Repentance is the only antidote to compromise. We must avail ourselves to God's grace, always available, always free. We can start over in Christ Jesus. Suggestion number four, be church smart. Your local church is potentially both an advantage and or a disadvantage, a help and or a hindrance, a blessing and or an impairment. Be church smart. Don't let church handle you. You handle church. Church is not your Lord. Church is your servant. Don't be overwhelmed. Be the head and not the tail. Don't be impressed by visuals, by numbers, by church hierarchy. You don't need church. You don't need church. Think of the New Testament Christians after the resurrection of Christ. If they didn't need church, that is, church as we know it, why do we? If Christ is our sufficiency, then we need nothing other than him. Attend church or don't attend church by choice. God doesn't require your attendance. Do not go to church under a sense of obligation. Have the attitude that you are simply gathering with the saints, period. No church politics, no membership, no yearly business meetings, no programs. Be above all that church stuff. Now, it must be said, many Christians are weak in the faith. That is, faith in Jesus. Such need a local church or a house church to keep them from sinking. Perhaps their entire Christianity will be lived depending on others to keep them afloat. Also, it is crucial to understand that pastor whoever is merely a brother. He is not your leader, your shepherd, your guide, your teacher. He is your brother and equal. Now, regarding the pastor of the local church, I'm going to make a statement that will distress many. The pastor is a compromiser. Compromise landed him his position a pastor. He compromised Christ when he compromised the Bible. He compromised the Bible when he chose tradition, denominational traditions, over Bible words. Other videos in the Like Really series make this point quite conclusively. Pastor whoever may be able to deliver an impact, an impacting, even anointed message from the pulpit. He may have great insights into human behavior and needs. He might be a really nice guy, but he is still a compromiser. And you are not obligated to hold him in, in higher esteem than the one sitting next to you in the pew. You don't have to finance his salary. Also, you must understand that your spiritual well-being is not the only concern of church leadership. People are required to maintain the church machinery. As such, everyone is a potential spoke in the wheel, a brick in the building project. Volunteers are required to maintain church programs. Your tithes and offerings are coveted. The Bible has much to say about one another ministry. The day of one man ministry, for example, a Moses type leadership is past. Don't sit under the ministry of one man. It is folly and dangerous to do so. The perspective of this one man, any man, is limited and faulty. If you do decide to attend church, attend several local churches. Again, don't be overly influenced by one person. And you don't have to attend church every Sunday. Give yourself a break. Guard against becoming institutionalized by an institutionalized church. Regularly commit yourself to the leadership 
of the Holy Spirit. And number five, talk to Jesus regularly. Talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Good morning, Lord Jesus. Good afternoon, Lord Jesus. Good evening, Lord Jesus. Thanks for teaching me. Thanks for wanting my company. I know that you love me, Jesus. Help me to pursue you today. I choose to have more of you. I choose you as my sovereign Lord. Nobody will replace you as first love. I love your will, your ways, your words. Lord Jesus, I choose to be your worshiper. I look forward to that day I will see you face to face. Fill me today with the Holy Spirit. Yes, talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Don't let a day, an hour go by without communicating with the one who loves you extremely. So that's my brotherly advice. 